Welcome to the new session on Indian philosophy, Purva Mimamsa Ritualism. Purva Mimamsa is an orthodox system based on pre Upanishadic literature, particularly to the Brahmins. Nyaya Vaisheshigas and Sankhya Yoga are orthodox in the negative sense, that is, they are not heterodox, not anti Vedic. Of course, it is true that they accept the authority of the Vedas, but they do not depend for their doctrines on the teachings of Veda. The distinguishing feature of Mimamsa system is the recognition of Veda as an infallible authority. The mantras and brahmanas in the Vedas constitute the ritual sections that are Karmaganda. The Aranyagas are the transition to the Upanishads. The Upanishads are considered as knowledge section of the Vedas that is Jnanaganda. The ritual sections and the knowledge sections are related as earlier Purva and later Uttara in the logical order. The system that is based on the earlier section is Purva Mimamsa and the philosophy which is based on the latter section is Uttara Mimamsa. They are also known by the names Karma Mimamsa and Jnana Mimamsa but they are more popularly known by the names Mimamsa and Vedanta. Mimamsa thinkers accept reason only incorrectly interpreting the Veda. Mimamsa thinkers were interested in solving the problem of the relation of speech and thought. Language is considered as independent of the individual using it. The word Mimamsa literally means inquiry or investigation. Aim of Mimamsa system is to establish the authority of the Vedas. The basic source of Mimamsa system is the Purva Mimamsa Sutra written by Jemini. There are several commentaries of this work, but the commentary among these is the commentary of or Bhashya of Shabari Swami. Shabari Bhashya was interpreted by two great scholars, Prabhagara and Kumari Labatta. As there are differences between the two commentaries, two school of Purva Mimamsa arose namely the Bhatta school and Prabhagara school. A third school of Mimamsa is said to have been founded by Murari Misra, but none of his works are available. Both Prabhagara and Kumarila school are realist and pluralist. Realism presented by them is nearest to the realism of Nyaya Vaisheshiga. They believe in the objective reality of the external world. As mentioned earlier, the primary aim of Mimamsa system is to defend and establish Vedic ritualism. So, it had to present a philosophy supporting the world view on which ritualism depends. The authority of Vedas is the foundation of ritualism and the Mimamsagas put forward the theory that the Vedas are apaurishya or they are not the work of any person. So, the Vedas are free from errors that writers commonly commit. Mimamsagas claim that the Vedas are external and self-existing. The written or heard Vedas are only temporary manifestations through particular saints. The Mimamsagas describe elaborately the theory of knowledge because through that they wanted to establish the validity of Vedas. They pointed out that the validity of every knowledge is self-evident. Knowledge arises under sufficient conditions. For example, when the sense organs are properly working, objects are present to them and other necessary conditions also exist then there is perception. Knowledge that arises through perception claims to be true and we accept it. If there is a cause for doubt, then belief is absent and knowledge does not arise. The Mimamsagas believe that by reading the Vedas, one at once gets knowledge and he will believe in what they say. For the Mimamsagas, the validity of Vedic knowledge is self-evident and the authority of the Vedas are unquestionable. What the Veda command one to perform is right and what it asked to avoid is wrong. Duty consists in doing what is right and avoiding forbidden acts. Duty must be done for the sake of duty. 
the rituals prescribed by the Vedas should be performed without aiming at any reward. They should be performed just because they are Vedic commands. But this disinterested performance of rituals is possible only through knowledge and self-control. This kind of disinterested performance of rituals gradually destroys the karmas and brings liberation. The Mimamsakas believe in Videha Mukti that is liberation after death. For the early Mimamsagas, liberation is attaining bliss or heaven, but for later Mimamsagas, it is cessation of both or it is freedom from all pains. Mimamsagas consider soul as an immortal eternal substance. Consciousness is not an intrinsic quality of the soul. Consciousness arises in it when it is associated with the body. The disembodied soul has no relation with the body. The Mimamsagas accepts law of karma. It is a natural and moral law that rules the world. The Mimamsagas points out that if a man performs rituals that provides in his soul potency or apurva which produces in future the fruits of his actions. Metaphysical ideas in Mimamsa philosophy. The Mimamsagas does not believe that there is creator who created this world of existence because they wanted to secure the supreme place for the external Vedas. But the Mimamsagas accept the reality of the world with all its diverse objects. They were against the Advaita theory of the unreality of the world of phenomena. They also believe in deities, souls, heaven and hell. Rites and rituals were performed to the deities according to Vedic commandments. Some scholars pointed out that the traditional Mimamsagas are atheist, but Max Muller pointed out that it is unfair to call Mimamsagas atheist just because they do not agree with the traditional conception of God. They have firm faith in the authority of Vedas, so they can't reject the Vedic belief in God. According to Max Muller, it is true that they were not ready to accept a creator God who is subjected to the charges of cruelty, partiality, etc. But Max Muller believes that the rejection of a creator God is not considered as a rejection of God. The early Mimamsagas are silent about God and the later Mimamsagas reject the proof for the existence of God. The gods of the Mimamsagas are immortal and they are not personal beings existing in time and space. On the other hand, they are external and self-manifesting entities described by the external self-revealing Vedas. The Vedic conception of God has no active place in Mimamsa way of life. The law of karma is working as a guiding principle in the universe. The world consists of living bodies wherein the souls can reap the consequences of their past deeds. The sense organs or the indriyas are the instruments for enjoying or suffering the consequences of one's karmas or actions. As everything is working in accordance with the law of causation, there is no necessity for Mimamsagas to admit the existence of God. Like the Nyaya Vaisheshika system, some Mimamsagas believe in the atomic theory. But unlike the Nyaya Vaisheshikas, Mimamsagas believe that atoms do not require an efficient cause like God for their arrangement. The law of karma is an autonomous theory which is independently combining, controlling and regulating the atoms. The Mimamsagas believe that the world eternally exists and there is neither creation nor total destruction of anything. This kind of belief separates Mimamsa system from other Indian systems and gave them a unique position in Indian philosophy. From the above points, one can rightly conclude that the Mimamsa metaphysics is realistic and at the same time pluralistic. According to the Mimamsagas, what is written in the Vedas is more dependable source of knowledge than man's sense experience. Mimamsa philosophy is not empiricism because it believes in non-empirical Vedic source of knowledge, in potential energy, in unseen moral principles in heaven, hell, etc. All these are something beyond sense experience. Shakti and Apurva 
the theory of potential energy. The Mimamsa system formulates the theory of potential energy to explain the theory of causation. For example, a seed possesses in it an unseen or imperceptible power or shakti with the help of which it can create the sprout. When this power is obstructed or destroyed in the seed, as for example by the frying of the seed, then the seed cannot produce the effect that is the sprout. Similarly, there is a power present in words. The power of expressing meaning again save power is present in height, that is the power of illumination. The power of movement is present in moving bodies, power of burning is present in fire, etc. Without accepting such unperceived potency or shakti in the cause, the Mimamsagas could not explain why in some cases through the cause is present, the effect does not come into existence. For example, some seeds do not sprout, the Mimamsaga thinkers points out that in such cases, though the cause is present, the causal potency has been destroyed or obstructed by some other present conditions. The Nyaya Vaisheshika system criticized this theory of potential energy. They expressed that even without admitting an imperceptible power in causes, the theory of cause effect relation may be solved by accepting that a cause produces the effect in the absence of obstructions and does not produce the effect in their presence. But it is true that Nyaya thinkers also accept something that is the absence of obstruction to explain the cause effect relation. The first is the instead of a negative something, they accepted a positive power or shakti to explain the positive effect and accepted a negative something to explain the non-creation of effect. Similarly, the Mimamsagas believe that the sacrifices performed here creates in the soul of the performer an unperceived power or shakti which is known as apurva which remains in the soul and produces the effect when circumstances. Conception of soul in Mimamsa system. The soul is an external infinite substance which is related to the body in the world of existence. The soul exists even after the destruction of the physical body to reap the fruits of its actions performed in the world of existence. Consciousness is not the essence of the soul, but it is an adventitious quality which arises in the soul when some conditions are present. In the state of liberation or in the state deep sleep, the soul has no consciousness because in those stages the soul is not in relation to sense object contact. There are different souls as there are individuals. The souls are in bondage and can obtain liberation. Purva Mimamsa Ritualism Mimamsaga system gives principal importance to the eternal Vedas. So, they could not believe in God who would be superior to the Vedas. The Vedas presents the criterion of what is right and what is wrong. A person can lead a good life if he obeys the Vedic commands. The Mimamsagas does not accept a creator of the world. For them, religion is identical with the Vedic injunction. In the Vedic period, sacrifices were performed to please different gods like fire gods, rain god, sun god, etc. It is true that the foundation of Mimamsa system is Vedic cult, but the rituals and sacrifices were performed not to please any god or not to worship any deity. In Mimamsa system, the importance of gods gradually fade. The place of a god is that in whose name an oblation is to be offered. According to Mimamsa system, a ritual is to be performed just because the Vedas command man to perform them. This conception is similar to Immanuel Kant's conception of duty for duty's sake. The Mimamsagas believe that an obligatory duty is not to be done with any interested motive, but 
a person who performs his duty does not ultimately go unrewarded. Mimam Sagas point out that everything in the universe works according to the impersonal moral law of karma. Dharma According to Jaimini, dharma is a command or injection which compels a man to action. It is the supreme duty. Dharma is super sensible. The Mimamsa points out that Vedas teach us Dharma. Dharma is what is contained in the Vedas or it is the command of the Vedas. These Vedic commands ask us to do certain acts and to avoid certain other acts. They are the positive and negative commands. The positive command is called Vidhi and the negative command is called Nisheda. The commands of Veda are something different from the ordinary morality. So, Vedic commands should not be mistaken for those of ordinary morality. But it is true that ordinary morality is required for a man before he is qualified to perform the rituals prescribed in the Veda. Dharma is really a religious duty. So, Mimamsagas believe that by performing it, one acquires uncommon merit. The Veda acts as the lamp which shows the nature of our path. The Veda does not compel you to select a particular path. Prabhagara differs from this view and he points out that dharma is to be observed for its own sake. Dharma and adharma deal with happiness and pain to be enjoyed or suffered in the life beyond. The actions that one performed here produces an unseen potency or power or shakti in the soul of the doer. This apurva is revealed when obstructions are removed and time becomes ripe for its revelation. As it is already mentioned, the law of apurva is a part of the wider law of karma. The apurva is the connecting link between our actions and its results. Actions are generally divided into three kinds, obligatory, optional and prohibited. Obligatory actions must be performed. They are compulsory actions. Because their violation results in sin, but at the same time their performance leads to us merit. Optional actions may or may not be performed. Here man has a right of choice. The performance of optional actions leads to merit but their non-performance does not lead to sin. Prohibited actions must not be performed because their performance leads to sin but their non-performance does not lead to merit. Obligatory actions are of two kinds. Nitya karma, those which must be performed daily, example daily prayers etc. Obedience to such commands does not depend upon the option of the individual. Naimitti karma, those actions which must be performed on special occasions, example the ceremonial bath during eclipses. Optional actions are called kamya karma, their performance leads to merit. If the optional actions are not performed, there is no demerit. Example, if a person desires heavenly enjoyment, he has to offer certain sacrifices, otherwise not. Prohibited actions are called pradisitta and their performance result in sin and leads to hell. Then there are expiatory acts, prajchitta, which are performed in order to get rid of or at least to make less severe the evil effects of the performed prohibited actions. In the early period, dharma was the chief end or the highest ideal according to Mimamsa, but later moksha was accepted as highest end in life. Moksha is abhavarga or freedom from evil. The discipline that leads to moksha according to Mimamsa is karma, but Nyaya Vaisheshika emphasizes on dhyana. Mimamsagas believe that all actions should not be stopped. Karma in the sense of sacrifice is necessary for reaching the highest end. Even a sannyasi should do obligatory duties because only through obligatory duties that one can reach the supreme end in life, the highest aim in life. The highest good according to Mimamsa conception is the attainment of heaven or attainment of bliss. 
Mimamsa Tingas explained that the performance of action if performed by any desire for enjoyment of rewards causes repeated birth. When one understands that worldly pleasures have only temporary existence and this worldly existence is only for a short period, then one tries to control one's passions and desires and lead a virtuous life. Such a person will avoid forbidden actions as well as actions with motive of future enjoyment. Thus, the chance of future birth and bondage is removed. With the help of disinterested performance of obligatory duties and acknowledge of the self, the karmas accumulated in the past are also gradually removed. In Mimamsa system, liberation is not a state of bliss. On the other hand, it is total cessation of painful experience. It is a stage where the soul remains in its own intrinsic nature beyond pleasure and pain. This is because consciousness and other mental states are not inherent in the soul. They originate in the soul when it is related to objects through the body and the organs. Now let us summarize. Purva Mimamsa school founded by Jaimini was to defend the and justify Vedic ritualism. The Mimamsakas believe that the Vedas are not the works of any person or apodisha and free from errors. The Vedas are eternal, what the Vedas command one to do is right or dharma and what it says not to do is wrong. Man's duty is to do what is right and to be away from forbidden acts. The rituals prescribed in the Vedas should be performed not to attain any reward. One should perform rituals in a detached manner. There are obligatory, optional and prohibited acts. The performance of obligatory rites destroys the karmas and brings about liberation. The early Mimamsagas believed that liberation is a state of bliss or attainment of heaven. But the later Mimamsagas explains liberation as a cessation of birth or it is liberation from all pains. The Mimamsagas accepted soul as an immortal eternal substance. But they do not believe consciousness as intrinsic to the soul only when it is associated with the body. The liberated soul is free from everything. The Mimamsagas believe in the reality of the physical world, so they are real. But they did not believe that there is a supreme soul or God who has created the world. The objects of this world are formed out of matter on the basis of karmas. The law of karma rules the world. When man perform rituals, there arises in his soul a potency or a purva which produces in future the fruits of his actions. Now I give you a few assignments regarding the session for you to work out. 1. Elucidate Mimamsa conception of God. 2. Explain Mimamsa metaphysics. 3. Explain Mimamsa conception of soul. 4. Write a note on Mimamsa conception of dharma. 5. Explain the theory of causation in Mimamsa philosophy. You can refer following books for further study. 1. Critical Survey of Indian Philosophy, C. D. Sharma, Motilal Benarsidas Publishers, 2009. 2. Indian Philosophy, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, Oxford University Press, 1923. 3. Spirit of Indian Philosophy, Banerjee, Curzon Press, 1975. 4. Structural Depths of Indian Philosophy, P. T. Raju, South Asian Publishers, New Delhi, 1985. 5. Outlines of Indian Philosophy, M. Hiriyanna, Motilal Benarsidas Publishers, 1993. Thank you for watching this program. Hope you have followed the session clearly. Let us meet in another session with another topic. Bye.